In this video, we will walk through the process of installing the Mega Live Imaging Target Lock to a Minn Kota Ultrax trolling motor. It's always important to refer to your installation guide to completely understand the mounting guidelines before you start, as well as refer back to them throughout the installation. In addition to the hardware included with your accessory, you will need the following supplies. A 5 amp slow blow fuse, a Phillips head screwdriver, 3 8 inch wrench or socket, a half inch wrench or socket, and some cable ties. As a reminder, always make sure your Humminbird fish finders are running the most up-to-date software by visiting humminbird.com. Your Megalive Imaging Transducer comes with the cables required to connect directly to your Apex or Solix fish finder. In addition to the cables permanently attached to the transducer, this includes two extension cables, a 10-foot Megalive power cable and a 20-foot Ethernet cable to allow for quick disconnect. To connect the Ethernet to a Helix control head, you'll need to purchase an Ethernet adapter cable. Additional recommended accessories include a Humminbird heading sensor GPS puck and a heading sensor GPS adapter for Apex and Solix only, or a Minn Kota heading sensor connected to an iPilot Link trolling motor. These accessories are required for the Mega Live sweep feature and the Minn Kota steer feature for iPilot Link trolling motor users. A dual mount plate, which is a separate purchase, is required to use a Mega360 imaging transducer with your Mega Live Imaging Target Lock. Now, let's get ready to prepare for our installation. The trolling motor should be in the fully retracted, flat position on the boat deck for this installation. Disconnect the motor from all sources of electrical power and test run the ethernet cable from the chosen mounting location on the trolling motor to the control head or ethernet switch. Test run the power cable from the chosen mounting location on the trolling motor to the main switch or fuse panel. It's also important to consider the following. The Mega Live Imaging Target Lock is powered separately from the control hood. It must be connected to a switch where it can be powered on when the boat is underway and powered off when it is docked. The cable should be routed through an established routing system on the boat in an area with minimal interference without sharp edges, obstacles, or obstructions that may damage the cables. The cables will move with the trolling motor when it is deployed and retracted, so it's important to allow enough length for movement. Determine if you must uninstall or reinstall your trolling motor stabilizer. You will need to uninstall and reinstall the stabilizer if you are installing your Mega Live on the starboard side of your trolling motor, or you are installing the dual mount accessory for Mega Live and Mega 360 installation. With the trolling motor deployed, the transducer has the following installation requirements. The transducer should not have anything obstructing the view of the beam. If possible, move anything to the sides and below the transducer that might obstruct the sight line of the beams. Next, we'll get into installing the mounting plate. The plate can be mounted on the left or right side of the trolling motor. Align the plate below the bow guard. Line up the holes on the plate with the threaded holes on the bow guard. Install the four included bolts through the plate and into the bow guard. Hand tighten until secure. Next, we'll get into installing the control box. Align the control box over the mounting plate with the Humminbird logo facing out and the power connector inside the large cutout in the mounting plate. Install the six included screws through the plate and into the control box using the provided Allen wrench. Make sure to hand tighten only. Next, we'll get into installing the landscape mode mount. The landscape mode mount should be open for this step of the installation. Unlock the mount by pressing down on the two release buttons and pulling the mount open. It will relock automatically once fully open. With the landscape mode mount hinge perpendicular to the shaft, connect the landscape mode mount to the shaft mount. The ratchets on the landscape mode mount hinge and the shaft mount are keyed to ensure correct alignment. Secure the landscape mode mount to the shaft mount with one of the included lock washers and screws using the provided hex bit. Hand tighten the screw until the lock washer is fully compressed and then 
Tighten an additional quarter turn. Make sure to hand tighten only. The screw and lock washer must be fully tightened. Failure to do so may result in the transducer detaching from the shaft mount in the water. Connect the transducer to the landscape mode mount. The ratchets are keyed. The ribs on the landscape mode mount ratchet should be aligned with the marks on your transducer. Secure the landscape mode mount to the transducer with one of the included lock washers and screws. Use the provided hex bit. Hand tighten until the lock washer is fully compressed and then tighten an additional quarter turn. Make sure to hand tighten only. Feed the transducer cables through the shaft until the last molded anchor point has just passed the shaft mount. Connect the cable cover to the shaft mount. The last molded anchor point is key to fit into the base of the cable cover. Secure the cable cover with the four included screws. Use the provided Allen wrench and make sure to hand tighten only. Next, we'll get into testing your Mega Live views. Rotate the transducer by hand to test the down forward and landscape mode views. Your trolling motor mount includes guides to help you position the transducer correctly. To alternate between down and forward views, rotate the transducer on its mount using both hands. To change from down or forward view to landscape mode, press the two release buttons on the hinge until the mount unlocks. Flip the transducer out until the hinge locks. To adjust the landscape mode angle, rotate the transducer on its mount using both hands. Next, we will connect the shaft assembly to the mounting plate. Install the four included bolts into the threaded holes on the steering housing. Do not fully tighten. Slide the bolts into the plate slots. Hand tighten the bolts using a 3 8 inch wrench and be sure to hand tighten only. Next, we'll get into installing the MegaLive Target Lock Heading Sensor. Slide the heading collar over the cables and shaft and align the holes in the collar with the holes at the top of the shaft. Align the heading collar so that the raised section faces away from the MegaLive transducer's pinging element to ensure the arrow on the heading sensor will point in the same direction as your MegaLive. Feed the heading sensor cable through the heading mount and position the sensor on the mount so that the arrow on the sensor points away from the gap in the mount. With the gap in the mount aligned with the raised section of the heading collar, slide the mount over the transducer cables and collar so that the transducer cables and heading sensor cable exit the mount through the gap. Slide the provided sleeving over all three cables, pushing one end into the opening of the mount. Secure the heading collar and mount to the shaft with the included screw and hex key. You may need to adjust the positioning of the cables to make room for the screw. Secure the heading sensor to the mount using the two provided screws and a Phillips head screwdriver. Adjust the sleeving until it is smooth and then secure both ends using one of the included cable ties just outside of the heading sensor mount and a second cable tie around the body of the transducer Ethernet connector. Fold the excess sleeving back on itself and secure it with a cable tie. If you do not plan to remove your unit frequently, you may also use the excess sleeving to cover all the connectors. Next, we'll get into adjusting the transducer height. Loosen the depth collar knobs and adjust the transducer shaft up or down so that it meets the following height requirements in all three views. The transducer must be mounted approximately six inches below the waterline. If the transducer is installed too close to the prop, it will be damaged. Ensure that there is at least one inch of clearance between the transducer and the trolling motor prop. Mega live damage caused by the transducer being installed too close to the trolling motor's prop is not covered by the product's warranty. Slide the bottom depth collar to the desired position and tighten the knob to secure the depth collar in place so the transducer shaft is fully secure and won't drop during operation. Slide the top depth collar down to secure the transducer shaft to the desired height and tighten the knob to secure the depth collar in place. Next, 
we will route the cables and connect the power. The power source must be turned off before you proceed with this installation. Do not route your Megalive target lock cables where they can be cut, ripped, or pulled by the trolling motor articulating, rotating, or during stowing and deploying. Failure to correctly route your cables will result in damage to your control box. Wires damaged by improper installation are not covered by the product warranty. It is also important to leave sufficient slack in the cables to allow your full movement of your trolling motor during normal operation. Humminbird recommends observing your trolling motor as it deploys and stows before finalizing your cable routing to avoid trolling motor pinch points. The cables should be routed through an established routing system on the boat in an area with minimal interference. Inspect the selected route carefully to ensure that there are no sharp edges, obstacles, or obstructions that may damage the cables. Avoid pinch points created by stowing or deploying the trolling motor. Route the power cables to the main switch or fuse panel, usually located near the console. If you must connect to a battery, connect to a battery switch, which is not included. Next, we'll walk through routing the Megalive power, ethernet, and heading sensor cables. Loosely wrap the sleeved Megalive power, ethernet, and target lock heading sensor cables, exiting the target lock heading sensor mount around the upper end of the shaft. Leave sufficient slack in the cables to allow for full movement of the shaft during normal operation. Connect the transducer and target lock heading sensor cables to the control box. Now, attach the power cable for the steering module to the control box. Secure the included zip tie mount to your mounting plate using the provided screw. Secure the cables to the zip tie mount on your mounting plate using one of the included zip ties. Next, we'll walk through routing the Megalive control box cables. If your Megalive is installed on the outboard, typically port side of your trolling motor, route the cables over your trolling motor. Secure them to the trolling motor with the included P-clip and screws. Route the rest of the cables with your Ultrax trolling motor cables. Secure them with zip ties at the base of the pedal control sleeve and along the trolling motor cables as needed. Route them over the bow to the chosen connection. If your Mega Live is installed on the inboard, typically starboard side of your trolling motor, route the rest of the cables with the Ultrax trolling motor cables. Secure them with zip ties at the base of the pedal control sleeve and along the trolling motor cables as needed. Route them over the bow to the chosen connection location. Depending on your installation configuration, you may first need to route the cables over the trolling motor. The included P-clip is not needed for an inboard installation. The control box cables must be routed and secured to allow for full movement of the trolling motor during normal operation and during stowing and deploying the motor. Failure to do so can result in the damage of the control box. Humminbird recommends observing your trolling motor as it deploys and stows before finalizing your cable routing. If you removed your motor stabilizer prior to installing your Megalive, reinstall it now through the Megalive plate using the provided screws with lock washers. It may be necessary to shorten your motor stabilizer. See the installation guide that was included with your trolling motor or visit MinkotaMotors.com for more information. For more information and other instructional videos, be sure to visit us at Humminbird.com or find us on YouTube.